Hi everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop the color palette into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video. So take a second to go and grab that and then come back and we will get started. Okay, so the first thing that we will do is go over our canvas dimensions. They are 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 dpi. The color profile that I'm using is the second one on the RGB list. And for our layers today, we need about 15 layers by the time that our drawing is complete. So make sure you have at least that many available by checking here. And if you need more layers, you can lower your DPI here to get more. This is our color palette here that you should have imported. And then first thing that we will do is color in our background layer. So go to your layer menu, click on the background color layer and click on this first color on the color palette. It's just a solid black. Easy enough. So next we will be on layer one and we are going to grab the second color on the color palette, the first row, and we're gonna make the ground where our little ghost is going to stand. So let's grab the selection tool, have it set to rectangle and color fill turned on. And we're just gonna draw a rectangle starting on the left side of the screen, maybe a fifth of the way up. And we're just gonna draw it all the way across covering the entire bottom and going off the right side of the screen and then let it go to fill it in. Then on our layer menu, we are gonna click on this layer and turn on alpha lock. And that way we can color on top of the layer without you know, going over the lines. So everything will be stuck on this one shape that we just drew. So let's go to our color palette and select the third color on the top row. And what we're gonna do now is just add some texture and light to the ground here. So under our brushes, we are going to go to charcoals and the to be compressed charcoal. Set that to maybe 20%. And we're just going to horizontally from left to right kind of add some little sections of this color. Nothing too, you know, precise, just kind of adding it in random spots, just a little bit. And then let's go to our color palette again and grab the fourth color on the top row. Same brush, same layer and everything. And we are just going to add some of that. And then grab the fifth color on the top row and add some of that as well on the very top of everything else. And this is the lightest color that we're using. So I also really wanna concentrate some of it right at the very edge here where our moon is going to be. So really at the top edge, add, add a good amount there as well. So your ground should look something like this. And we will move on to our moon now. That's all that we're gonna do on that part for now. So let's add a, go to our layer menu, add a new layer. And then we're going to go to our color palette and select the first color on the second row, the bright orange. Go to our brushes and we are going to select the monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. I'm just gonna set it to 100. And we are just going to draw a circular shape, hold your pen down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle, and then let it go. And we do want it to be pretty big and take up, you know, a good amount of the sky. And then I'm just gonna move it just to the left a little bit. I have snapping turned on, so like this is the center of the screen and I don't want it to be perfectly centered. So I'm just gonna move it off to the left a little bit. 
And then we're going to fill in the circle just by using the color dropper. If you have a fuzzy line here where you can see the black behind it, undo your color dropper. And then when you go to fill it in, drag and drop the color and hold your pen down and then you can up the threshold by sliding right on the screen or drop it down if you need to. But you know, you should just be able to move it up a little bit and that should fill in any gap that you have there. And then we are going to do a very similar thing that we did to the ground here. And we're gonna add our, some texture to our big moon. So go to your layer menu, click on this layer and turn on alpha lock again. And then we're going to go to our color palette and we're gonna use those same colors that we used on the ground. So let's start with this fourth color on the top row, this lighter yellow. Go back to our to be compressed under the charcoals category. Let's increase the size to maybe 30 to 40%. And I'm just gonna kind of run my brush all along the middle and right side, upper right side of the shape here. Getting a little bit thicker towards this very right side. That's gonna be our lightest side. Then let's go to our color palette again and select the fifth color on the top row and we're gonna focus that just right on the upper right side here. And I kind of just follow the shape of the circle a little bit as I go. And then we are going to grab the third color on the top row and use this as the darker color and then we'll use that on the opposite side down here. Again, kind of following the shape of the circle. And that is it for our moon. So now we are going to add a new layer again. Go to our color palette and select the second color on the second row, the bright white. Go back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Size still set to 100. And we are just gonna make some stars all around in the sky. Really simple ones. I'm just going to basically do some little dot shapes. Some bigger, some smaller. Just all over the place kind of randomly throughout. Something kind of like that. And now we can move on to our ghost. So this is going to be the really fun part. So let's go to our layer menu, add a new layer, and then the same brush and color that we were just using. So the bright white, second color on the second row, same monoline brush at 100%. And we are going to start drawing the ghost shape. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a circle for the head. So just kind of, you know, off to the right of our moon here, about halfway up our moon, I'm going to draw a circular shape. Hold your pen down and then touch your finger to the screen. Let's make it about that big and then we're going to fill that in. And then from here, I'm going to go on each edge and draw a straight vertical line. So let's start on the left side here, right where the outer edge of our circle is. Draw a line, hold your pen down so it turns perfectly straight and then touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly vertical. And then I'm going to zoom in and click edit shape here at the top. And as you can see there, it you know is a little bit outside of the circle and kind of ruining the shape here. So I'm just gonna click edit shape and then kind of bring it inside a little bit so that it doesn't look that way anymore. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the right side. So draw a straight line all the way down, hold it down. Touch your finger to the screen. The length, you know, doesn't really matter. It's supposed to be kind of wobbly at the bottom. So this one I made just about to the bottom of the moon. This one is about the same. We'll click edit shape again and just kind of line that up a little bit better. Like that. 
Okay, and then I'm going to lower my brush size down to maybe 60%, and we're going to do the bottom of our ghost shape here. So I'm going to go from left to right and make a squiggly line going up and down all the way across to kind of mimic, you know, the way the sheet would fold. Something like this. You know, some of them bigger, some of them not as big. And then we are going to fill that in because it's all one shape and it should all be connected. Smooth it out anywhere if you need to. But again, it shouldn't be perfect. It's a sheet after all. Okay, so that's our main ghost shape. So the next thing that we're going to do on the same layer here is we're gonna add a little arm. So again, our size has dropped down to about 60%. And I'm just going to start about halfway through on this left side here and make a line going out and back in, kind of in a triangular shape. Just like this, and then we will fill it in. And that's the ghost one hand, and then let's go back to our color palette. Select the last color on the second row, this grayish color here. Okay, let's lower our brush size down to maybe 30. And then we're just gonna make another shape just like this one on the inside here, kind of like this, to just kind of show where the other arm would be. Okay, and let's add a, let's move on now to a new layer. So that was all on one layer. Let's add a new layer, drag it below this layer that we are currently, we're currently working on above the stars. And then we're gonna go to our color palette and select the third color on the second row. Same monoline brush. Let's bring the size back up to maybe 60%. And I am just going to make a leg shape. So it's just gonna be basically a stick. So let's draw a straight line, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly vertical. And it comes out from the ghost and then it's gonna go up over the pavement. And then we'll just go over just a little bit and make another perfectly straight vertical line. And then kind of just, you know, connect them and fill it in all the way down. And we're going to cover this part up with a sock, so it's okay if this part doesn't look perfect. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to our color palette and select the second color on the second row, back our white color again. And we are just going to be on that same layer and we are going to make a sock type shape over our ankle here. So I'm just going to kind of make some horizontal lines like this to kind of make a pretend sock shape. So that looks good. And then I'm going to go back to my color palette, grab the fourth color on the second row, the red, which is going to be our shoe. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make a perfectly straight horizontal line. So I'm gonna go down from this sock part a little bit. So this will be the top of our shoe. So go down just a little bit and then start to the right of your sock here and go over to the left and go out quite a ways because this will be the front of our foot will be on this side here. Hold your pen down, touch your finger to the screen and then let go. And then to make the shoe shape, we're gonna start on the front here on the left side, kind of make a curved up line like this, kind of fill that in. And then it's gonna curve back up here and then go back down. So this is kind of our little shoe shape. Okay, so next we are gonna to go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock. And then we're gonna go back to our color menu, grab the fifth color on the second row, this gray, and this is gonna be the sole of our shoe. So now the alpha lock's turned on, we can just draw and it'll stick within this shape that we already have here. So start on either side and draw a straight line all the way across. Hold your pen down, touch your finger to the screen, and then go ahead and click edit shape at the top to kind of adjust it so that we have just a little smidge showing across the bottom of our shoe like that. And then next we're gonna go back to our second color on the second row, this white color, drop our size back down to maybe 30%. And we're just gonna draw some laces on the top. So I'm just gonna draw three little laces right there, just kind of 
you know, pretty much straight lines right on the front of our shoe. So that's our leg. So now we just need to make another leg. So let's go to our layer menu, find our leg layer here, slide left on it and click duplicate. Our top one here that pops up, let's click the arrow tool. And then we are going to drag it to the right and down just a little bit. But if you like the placement of all your objects and you can still see a little gap here in your skin, just click on the layer, turn off alpha lock, and then we can go back to our skin layer, same brush, and we can fill that part in. But I do think that the placement's a little weird here. My legs look a little too long. So I'm gonna go back to my layer menu, find my ghost layer, click the arrow tool, and I'm just gonna drag it down just a little bit. And that looks a little bit more normal. I also think it needs to go to the left a little bit there so the legs are a little more centered. There we go. So now that that is all done, let's lastly add the eyes and then we'll move on from our ghost. So let's add a new layer on our layer menu above everything. Go to our first color on the color palette, the black, and we are going to go to our selection tool here, set it to ellipse and color fill turned on. And we are just going to start on the top left here and draw a small vertical oval like so. Go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of this layer, click the arrow tool and move it over to the right just a little bit. I have snapping turned on and, and that helped it keep it pretty in line with my other one. So do that if you need to so that they stay lined up. And then I'm gonna actually go to my layer menu. This one's already selected. I'm gonna slide right on this one so they're both selected. Click the arrow tool and we'll just move them down and to the right just a little bit. They were a little too close to the edge, but we do want them to be mostly towards the left side of our ghost shape here to show that we're facing this direction. Okay, so now we are going to make our candy bucket. So I thought it was cute. I made the candy bucket. It's orange like a pumpkin, but then I put a like little Dracula face on it. So I thought that was kind of fun. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. So let's add a new layer on our layer menu. Find the first color on the last row. Same monoline brush, and we're gonna draw a perfect circle again. Draw a circular shape, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen, and then fill it in. And it's about this size. Let's maybe drop it down a, side, a little bit. I'm gonna click the arrow tool, you turn on uniform, and then drop it just a little bit here. Okay, and then in order to get the shape that we want, I am going to cut the top of it off and make it a little different. So let's grab our selection tool, switch it to rectangle, turn off color fill. And we are just going to start on the top left way outside of our circle here and draw a rectangular shape. And we just wanna cut off maybe the top fifth or quarter of our little pumpkin, our little circle here. So do that, click the arrow tool. So it'll select that little section and then drag that off the screen so that all that we're left with is this like partial circular shape. Let's be on our same orange color, the first one on the last row and our monoline brush at about 30%. And we're just going to draw a curved line that connects this each side. But we just, we didn't want it to be the full curve of like our original pumpkin. I just want it to be a smaller, shorter curve. So starting on the left here, draw a curved line, hold it down till it turns into like a perfectly curved shape. Click edit shape and then we're just going to adjust it a little bit here. So I just want it to be a flatter curved line connecting each side. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to fill in that little remaining shape that was left. So that's the shape of our little pumpkin bucket so far. 
So next we're going to make the little opening part, the little, you know, shadow up here that shows that it has a hole in the top. So let's go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of this orange layer that we just made. Go to our color palette, select the second color on the last row and fill in our shape. Click the arrow tool and then let's drop the size down just a little bit. So we're just going to drop it down just a smidge and then we're going to go to our eraser tool. I also have my eraser tool set to monoline. Let's bring this up to 100%. And then what I'm going to do is draw an eraser line starting right near the top here, and it's going to curve below it. And then we're going to hold that down until it turns into a perfectly curved line. Click Edit Shape, and let's bring it up just a little bit so it's a little... So this is the opening that we're left with, and then I'm going to go back to my eraser tool and just erase all the rest of this. And then that is what we're left with. So it gives the illusion that there's the opening there. Okay, so next let's go to our layer menu, add a new layer, drag this layer below both of our pumpkin layers. And then we're gonna to go to our color palette, select the top color on the top, the first color on the top row. And what we're going to do is just draw a curved line that's going to be the handle for our pumpkin basket. So same monoline brush, we have it set to about 30%. And we are just going to draw the curved line for the handle. So let's just start on the left side here near where this opening is. Draw a curved line going up and down. Hold it down. Click Edit Shape and let's just kind of adjust it here so that it just fits right in the hand of our little ghost guy. If you need to move your pumpkin closer to your ghost or anything first, you totally can. You can go to the layer menu, select both layers, and then just kind of move them over a little bit so that everything looks like it lines up nicely. Okay, so now we are going to draw the face on our little candy basket here, and it's going to be a vampire face. So we are going to add a new layer on top of all of our other layers, and we're actually going to use symmetry for this. So let's go to our gear icon, turn on the drawing guide, click edit drawing guide, do symmetry, and it should automatically be vertical. If not, it's under options here. Make sure it's set to vertical. And then we're actually going to move our line here. And we're just going to drag it until it looks to be about in the middle of our pumpkin. And then click done. And then let's go to our layer menu and make sure this layer says assisted. If it does not, you can click on it and turn on drawing assist. And let's just start with the eyes. So we are going to be on our first color on the first row on, and on the monoline brush set at about 15 to 20%. And for the eye, we are just going to start on the right side here and, you know, a little bit down from the top a little bit up from halfway and make a little circle. And then let's draw an eyebrow. I'm just going to start above my eye here and draw a slanted line, hold it down so it turns perfectly straight. Okay, and then we're gonna switch to white. So let's grab the second color in the second row here and then we're gonna draw a little thing. So let's start just a little bit off center here, closer to the bottom of our bucket. And we're just gonna draw a pointy shape, two pointy lines, and then fill in the top of them like this. Switch back to our black color. And then I'm just going to start on the left and draw a cross, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen so it's perfectly horizontal. Then click edit shape and we'll just move it down just a little bit until it covers the top of our fangs here. And that is it for our face. I am going to move the eyes down just a little bit. So I'm gonna just use the selection tool on free form and move them down just a little bit like that. And I like it, so that looks good. 
So we're just going to draw one bat and copy it twice to get three bats. So let's add a new layer on our layer menu. Same black color, first one on the first row, same monoline brush at about 15%. And we're actually going to use the symmetry line again. So let's go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on drawing assist. And let's just start up in the top here. And I'm going to start on the bottom of the bat. We're going to have two curved lines and then one big curved line to the middle. But this will be the middle of our bat. So let's just start and draw a curved line like this. Hold it down. I'm going to click Edit Shape and just move it over just a little bit so that the middle is really pointy there. Start on the edge of this one and draw another curved line. Hold it down. And then we're going to start on that point and draw a curved line all the way to the middle. Hold it down so it turns into a curved line. Let's click edit shape and just make it a little bit curvier even like this and then let's fill that in. So that's our bat shape. So I'm going to click the arrow tool here and we're just gonna you know change the angle a little bit maybe drop the size just a smidge and place that about there. Go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of this layer, click the arrow tool again, change the angle again, and maybe place it about here. Make another duplicate and one more time. Place this one maybe here, all in front of the moon so that we can see them all nicely. I'm just going to kind of rearrange them a little bit more. Maybe like that. There we go. Just kind of arrange them however you would like. Okay. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is add a little bit of shadow under the feet here. So we're going to go to our layer menu. We're going to go all the way back down to our ground layer. It should be right above our background below our moon. It's on alpha lock. Make sure that it still is. And then we are using our black color here. We are going to switch back to our charcoal, the to be compressed charcoal. Drop the size to maybe 15 to 20%. And I'm just going to lightly, at a slight angle, right near the feet, draw kind of a shadowy area. So at an angle like going away from the moon, so mine's going down and to the right just a little bit. Just going to kind of draw a little bit of a shadow. And not just, and it can go a little further than the feet too because of the body would also kind of create a little bit of a shadow as well. So something just like that, just to kind of finish it off. So that is it for our drawing today. I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.